Hey everyone, in this tutorial we're going to learn how to create a simple cell animated swirl transition. Then at the end, we'll retime individual letters so you can get different variations on the same animation as seen here. I myself am not a cell animator, and it's okay if you're not either. We're going to make this easy. I'm going to show you some really simple ways you can use the tools and After Effects that you already know as a backbone for cell animation. So starting from scratch, here's your text. And our method is, uh, it's hard to cell animate from nothing, uh, it takes years of practice. So what we're gonna do, is we're gonna build up a sample animation using the tools we already know in After Effects, and then we're basically just gonna trace it using Paint and Stick. So I started this off using a rotation, so I'm just gonna come out here, put on a rotation keyframe, come back to the first frame, something like that. Then I also had it scale in, so I'll press S for scale. And then also the letters were uh, were spread apart uh, as it came in. So what I'll do is I'll go to Animate, uh, Tracking. It's here, I'll just put a keyframe here. Uh, sometimes I just like to put, oops, there we go. Sometimes I just like to put on a keyframe and then press U so I can quickly show all the keyframe parameters and not see all the excess junk that I don't want to see. So back here at our landing frame, I'm going to set my tracking to zero. And up here, I'm just going to spread this out. So uh, these are all off screen. Play this back. Doesn't look too good so far. So uh, let's use what we know about After Effects to ease this in. I'm going to select these keyframes, right click, keyframe assistant, easy ease in. And then using the uh, speed graph, I'll just pull out this handle so that eases in. I don't want to go uh, too far with it. All right, that is not too bad. So now let's just play with the offsets here. All right, I think I can work with that. Okay, so next I want to add just a little bit of a delay on these letters coming in, and I need to break up this text into individual letters. Actually, there's a great script for this. It's called uh, Decompose Text. You can find it on ascripts.com. So once you have that installed, that'll be here under Decompose Text. And uh, just have this layer selected, press Decompose. I'll just collapse these layers real quick. Your original text layer is uh, unaffected, it's just turned off, but now you have all of your letters individually. So let's offset these a little bit to make this more interesting. All right, so now we wanna build in loose trails for these letters, so that way when we start animating, we have something to reference, uh, so we know how long the tail should be uh, so it's easier to keep track of that, and it's not inconsistent as we animate. So to do that, I'm just going to use Paint and Stick. I'll make a new adjustment layer, actually. And I'll go to A Scripts and A Plugins, Paint and Stick. From there, I'll turn on Onion Skin. And uh, under the Options, I'm going to take the Future Frames number and set that to zero, because we're looking to build a trail here. We're not uh, looking to reanimate these. But then I'll go to my past frames, and I'm going to set this past frames up to maybe 5. Let's see how that looks. So uh, the onion skin here is basically acting as a trail, and we can use this to trace when we're animating. I'll actually just make the uh, tint white so it's a little easier to see. Alright, uh, that's probably not long enough. I actually probably want to make this trail a lot longer. So maybe I'll set this uh, to 10. About double the length. Okay, that's looking better. Also, something that I should note. Um, right now, I don't have a background on. Under uh, Composition, under Composition Settings, I've just set this background color to blue. If you have a solid on here, uh, the onion skin isn't going to work. This is because Paint and Stick is being used as an adjustment layer, and the onion skin is being created for all the layers beneath it. So when you have a fully opaque background, the last thing to be composited over the onion skin is the fully opaque background, so the result is you can't see the skins. There are tutorials for using onion skin on the website, but for now, just make sure you don't have a background and everything will work out. Okay, so now I'm almost good to start animating. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pre-compose this as a reference because uh, when I start animating, I want my timeline to be pretty clean. So I'm going to uh, select all these layers, pre-compose and just call this uh, reference. I'm also going to put a tint on it And I'll just make this, uh, we'll say, green, just so I can tell it apart from my drawings, because my drawings are going to be white. 
Maybe turn down the opacity a tiny bit. And I'm just going to get started with uh, one letter. So I think that the T is as good as any other. And the last thing I'm going to do is for this reference, I'm going to go in here and I'm going to uh, go to Advanced and go to Preserve Frame Rate when nested in Render Queue. Because when I animate, I actually think I'm just going to animate at uh, 12 frames a second, or uh, as most people would call it, on twos. And I don't want anything about this to change when I change my main comp to 12 frames a second. So now to start animating, I'm going to start animating on this T, and I'll make a uh, new solid. I'll label it T. And I'll apply Paint and Stick. Choose a frame location if you haven't already. And now you just kind of have to start drawing and uh, see what happens. And I move to my next frame. By the way, I'll press U so you can see uh, my keyframes down here. I'm also going to turn on onion skin for my drawings. So I'll press T to do that so I can see my last frame and get an idea for the, uh, the length and the width. Maybe I'll also set up my uh, past frames and my future frames. Two about five, so I can see five frames behind and uh, five frames ahead. And I'm going to try to stay pretty close inside of my letters as a reference, because we know we like that general motion. Uh, now we just want it to look like it's been hand-drawn. All right, and at this point, I think I want to turn off onion skin here, and uh, I'm just going to draw a regular T before it transitions into the actual text. All right, and uh, let's see how this looks. So what I'm going to do is go back to play this, and I'm going to shut off my reference and uh, just play forward. That's actually not too bad, and it was pretty easy to do, right? So the next step here would be to clean up your lines. Uh, so to do that, uh, this is actually a pretty time-consuming process. But you have to do it, so just get used to it. And there are two schools of thoughts on this. Uh, one is you could just go in and uh, make amendments to these drawings here. The other is that you could just start from scratch on a second layer. And uh, I think that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to turn this reference on because I don't want to ever get too far away from my original shape. And I'm going to take this T here. T reference, I'll just label it that. And I'll go to Effects, Color Correction, Tint. I'll just uh, color this something completely different. Make this like light red. All right. And uh, now I'm going to duplicate over this layer just because I'm lazy and I don't want to go to Layer New Solid and apply Paint and Stick again. From here, I can select Paint and Stick and I'll just uh, delete all the keyframes on this top layer here. And uh, get rid of this tint. And now I'm just going to trace over each of these uh, and try to make them look nice. And don't be afraid to undo if you screw up. This is actually probably the hardest part, at least as far as I'm concerned. And I'm just going to put this on a time lapse because this process is uh, very time consuming and you don't want to have to sit through the whole thing. Alright, so there's the animation, and I'm actually just going to uh, delete the reference for this letter, just to keep my scene clean, and uh, I'm just going to press forward. The process is going to be exactly the same through every single one of these, so I'll do a time lapse, but I won't be speaking through it. Alright, here's another letter that's been roughed out, the M. I'll just make a uh, hold frame again. Control shift clicking on Windows. Command shift clicking on Mac. And just one thing I wanted to note is uh, one of the things I'm trying to do is I'm looking at the echo and I'm trying to bring in the shape of the letter as it uh, resolves. 
The T was a great one to start on because uh, it's mostly kind of a straight line and then it can form at the end. But for the rest of the letters, this is something that we might want to be aware of, is uh, building in this M trail. And in fact, I might even want to go back and uh, build in the M trail throughout the entire animation here. This is actually one of the few cases where uh, it's a good example of where I'd want to lower the opacity of my current frame. So I'm going to do that here so I can see uh, this future frame. And then what I'll do is I'm just going to uh, erase off some of this tail here. And uh, continue to kind of extend with uh, the trails for the M here. And again, because I'm on fast draw, it's just doing a quick preview over the screen uh, before it calculates that opacity. And there you have it. All I had to do was loosely trace over some existing animation, and it gives my piece an entirely new look. So when we were drawing, we made sure to keep all of our letters on separate layers. And the cool thing about that is I just uh, duplicated over this composition a couple of times, and uh, retimed the letters. Sometimes this can be a great way to change the feel of your animation without having to go back and redo a lot of work. So just a quick word about cell animation. It takes a lot of practice. I'm getting better myself, but I still don't quite have a steady hand, and I have to rely heavily on guides and references like I showed in this tutorial to get nice eases and smooth arcs. The real trick to getting good at cell animation is to not worry about how good or bad it is, but to just have fun with it and get in practice as often as possible. Please let me know if you like this tutorial, and if you have any other requests for shots or effects you'd like to see. Thanks for watching. For more info, check out aescripts.com slash paint and stick.